All right, it is finally game week, Adam. The finally. Buffaloes, uh, we don't have to say camp practice number whatever. It's game week practice number one. And, yeah, finally the Buffaloes have a game. Obviously playing Colorado State on Friday night at Bronco Stadium at Mile High, 7.30 p.m. Uh, we're outside the ticket office, so, you know, if you need tickets, uh, you know, come over here and get them. But um, finally game week. How excited are you? Well, it was fun just to change topics from CU to an opponent with Mike McIntyre today. Uh, it's going to be interesting just how people perceive this game now with Colorado mm -hmm. State obviously losing to one of the worst teams in the Mountain West, or at least what was perceived to be right. one of the worst teams. It's On one hand, you feel good if you're a CU fan, obviously, because mm -hmm. you saw what Hawaii was able to do with you know, the, you know their offense, and CU's receiving corp is obviously better than that. Right. Uh, but at the same time, if you don't go out and beat CSU by 30 points now, everyone's going to look at it <laughs> right. as a disappointing performance. So there's a lot of pressure on this football program now. Yeah, I would hope that the that the rational fans, uh, taking into account the rivalry aspect of it and the fact that all those cliche things, you get better from week one to week right. two. I don't expect a 30-point win. I do expect CU to go out there and uh, win going away you know, by at least a couple touchdowns. So I think if they don't do that, then I, I might be a little bit worried. But um, I certainly don't expect a 30-point win. But CSU is going to be able to make some plays over the top. And right. I think there's, this is going to be a football game that's going to be pretty entertainment, entertaining. There's going to be a lot of big plays. At least that would be my expectation going in. Yeah, I think, I think the receiver position on both sides is pretty talented. Mm -hmm. And I think those kids uh, – on, on both teams are going to make a lot of plays. But let's talk about the, the depth chart came out over the weekend. We haven't had a chance to really talk about that. But uh, um, as, as you first saw the depth chart, anything jump out at you? Well, Delrick Abrams it seems to be the one firm starter out of that yeah. cornerback group because you've got Dante Wigley and Trey Udofia listed as co-starters on the other side. Right. I thought it was interesting that Chris Miller, who missed uh, some of camp with a hamstring injury, is listed as a co-backup with Makai Blackman, who we heard some positive things about. But you just kind of assumed that he was on the outside looking in with that competition. So yeah. uh, that was interesting to me. We had that conversation about does this team have a base defense? And I don't think you're going to see one consistent base defense. But to see that Drew Lewis is listed as the number one outside linebacker with Nate Lamb and, and Rick Amboa as the inside backers kind of shows you what yeah. they expect to be the defense they put out there to start games. Yeah, and actually I had a chance to talk to Nate Lamb today, and, and he did mention to me, he said, um, I was asking about Drew, and, and he talked about how selfless that was of Drew to make that move. He said, but he goes, Drew's going to be at the in, in, inside quite a bit, mm -hmm. too. So um, you know, expect them to move that around, kind of as we've talked about. But uh, he certainly won't be just at the outside linebacker. But, um, yeah, cornerback clearly is not settled. Uh, the other thing, offensive line, which we've kind of uh, we've, we've kind of talked about throughout camp that we thought it was going to be those those veterans yeah. that it is, um, you know Josh Kaiser and uh, Brett Tons on the left side, and then obviously Lenat and Hagel on the right, Purcell in the middle. So not a surprise there. And what about Israel Antoine, true yeah. freshman, expected to be a starting defensive lineman for you? McIntyre said that he's had you know talented freshmen at San Jose State come in there, but he's not had that true freshman here at CU. He's a really special talent, and, and you love everything about the kid from his work ethic to the fact that. He uh, has kind of a change in demeanor when it comes to scrimmages and is not a guy you can joke around with in those situations. A very right. serious guy when it comes to, to performing in, in those deals. And then what about backup quarterback? They still have – still have the or. They yeah. either have decided and they're, they're not letting people know. Or right. I, I would I got to assume it would be Sam Noyer, right? I would think so. I mean, just kind of the conversations I have with people throughout camp, and I haven't really asked that question really in the last 10 days or so, but everything up to that point with Sam was, was kind of leading that competition, not by – not by a wide margin, but that he was leading that. So I would expect, especially with him having some game experience, that he'd be that number two going in. One other thing that stood out to me is Katie Nixon now. Mm -hmm. We kind of expected him to be more of a slot receiver, maybe a scat back. And yeah. he's listed as an outside receiver. And actually, he told me that off the record during camp at one point that he had kind of moved into a different role. And yeah. uh, he's a guy that can get, get behind some defenses with his speed. Yeah, and uh, Darren Shiverini told me at one point, he said, look, Katie Nixon can make a lot of plays on the outside. So, um, so not... I guess the conversation we've had, not too much of a surprise, maybe a yeah. surprise uh, to a lot of the fans. But I, ex I still expect KD probably to move around a little bit. I think all those guys will move around a little bit. I know that they've been kind of um, switching them around a little bit in practice. But, uh, but certainly seeing him as a, as a co-starter with KB on Ento um, was a little interesting. Well, and I think receiver's the one position, too, that with the depth chart, it's not – as black and gray as some other, right. or black and white as some other positions. You know, yeah. it's going to be a lot of different packages. You're going to see LaVisca Chanel in all kinds of roles. You're not, you're going to see him at one spot in the depth chart, but he's going to be utilized in a lot of ways. Yeah, I know. You know I've seen some people say, how are Winfrey and Chanel and Orr? You've got to start both. Yeah. 
I, they're going to get a lot of opportunities. So I don't think it really matters who starts there. Um, running back, I thought it was interesting that there's an or Kyle Evans and Trayvon McMillan. I um, heard a lot of good things about both of them, but it, I kind of got the impression that Trayvon was kind of, um, yeah, you know, kind of stepping out a little bit there. But they're listed as an or. So, but it, it still kind of confirms what we thought that those two guys are going to get the bulk of the carries. We'll see. Uh, my guess based on everything we've seen and heard is that McMillan will probably be somewhere about 65 yeah. percent of the snaps maybe because Kyle Evans can be that change of pace a little bit more so I'd be mm -hmm. really surprised if McMillan doesn't have the bulk of the carries when the season ends yeah one other running back note is Donovan Lee not a running back anymore at least on the depth chart uh, was listed uh, as a back about receiver which is a position that he played early in his career here he's kind of bounced around played even played corner at one point um, yeah. Donovan I think they're just trying to these, maybe he's just trying to find a way to get on the field. Uh, you know, I think receiver's obviously deeper than, than running back, but hey, maybe there's some opportunities to get him on the field. He's a kid that has made some plays in his career here, mm -hmm. um, and it would, it would be nice to see him in a senior just year do something. one magical play that he can really yeah, look just, back on. You yeah, know? just something from his senior year, and, and he, he, can, he can return kicks too. In fact, you know, in the, during McIntyre's tenure, uh, the, the kid with the, with the highest kick return average for a season was Donovan Lee. Okay. Back in I think it was 2014. Well, he hasn't, or maybe it's 2015, but he hasn't returned a kick since. So, you know, he's he's one that can do that as well. And they got Katie Nixon and Ronnie Blackman mm -hmm. expected to be their starting kickoff returners. There's definitely some big play potential with, with those guys in there. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see what they do returners. I expect uh, Blackman and Nixon to handle those duties, but uh, but certainly the depth chart. Not a ton of surprises, but I think uh, what the biggest takeaway I have is look forward to those those 2017 and 2018 kids. There's a lot of them in the two deep. Yeah. That class is going to be remembered here for a long time, the 2017 class, for I sure. I agree. Well, that'll do it for us, uh, and we'll, we'll come back later on this week to do more of a preview of the CSU game.